it's Rhea. Wherever you are and whatever time it is, I hope you are enjoying yourself. So today we have a fun supply to go over. I'm sure you noticed by the title. I've seen tons of videos lately surrounding Artix and their acrylic markers. So during Prime Day on Amazon, I decided to take that opportunity to snag two individual sets and just kind of try them out. So keep that in mind. Um, I definitely bought these on my own. They weren't sent to me. I also didn't get the popular ones, I want to say. I feel like these two are a little bit more of like their side series. I feel like the main promotions I've seen for these markers have been in like their larger sets. But that said, let's get into the individual two sets that I bought. Uh, the Simp Top markers came as a 24 pack. Very cute packaging, by the way. Um, but it also came with all these gel pins as well. Um, so it came with both of those for $12. So price-wise, that's already pretty incredible, to be honest. And then going to the Artex 32 acrylic marker set. I don't show that there's two rows here, but you'll see it later on. Both of them are nicely packaged. And um, now getting into swatching, I'm going to be using my sketchbook. I finally finished covering it with stickers and it just makes me so happy to look at now. I want to use it more. Also, the reason why I'm swatching it in my sketchbook is because that's where I'm assuming I will end up using it the most, or at least that's where I aim to use it often. And then we have this little like extra sheet of paper that I'm kind of using to test swatches on a little bit, like before I fully swatch it. I mean, you don't really need to go through this level of protection, but... <laughs> So I'm kind of showing like how the sim tap marker was activated just then and um, you basically tap or push down on the edge of the marker and then you'll see the paint sort of like slowly flow to the nib and like color it because you'll see that the white nib is now like whatever color the marker is. You can also see the paint on the side of the barrel which I thought was always pretty cool. But yeah, I'm pretty much used to the activation mechanic on acrylic markers um, because I've used Posca markers before, although the next set doesn't really have that, so that's also kind of cool. Also in contrast to Posca markers, these have these nice little brush tips, which kind of makes the application feel a little bit nicer and cleaner. As you can see, a part of this 24 set uh, includes silver, gold, and white colors. For some reason, the activation on the metallics took a little bit longer and more effort. Um, and in general, you kind of notice how like the color doesn't like fill the nib completely. So that I feel like was a little bit interesting. The gel pins went on pretty smoothly and nice. Um, I will say whenever it comes to like the metallics in this set, I'm not a huge fan of like yellowish gold. I prefer a little bit more orange, but that's just like a personal preference. Moving on to the 32 set of markers, you can see the two rows that I was talking about here. Also, they look so like aesthetically pleasing because I organized them to be that way. I find it to be helpful whenever I go to do swatches, whenever all the colors are kind of like similar to each other because I know where to look for what type of color I'm looking for. Although I'm not sure why I swatched all of these colors so small to be honest. Um, I definitely need to make them bigger next time. Oh, also another thing that I like to do is like go back and layer my swatches sometimes. So like I'll at least add a second layer to see if like layering up the colors makes a difference. But with this 32 set, these markers feature like a dual tip. So one side is a brush tip and the other side is like a bullet nib. I'm about to demonstrate it, but with the bullet tip, you can get more consistent yet mildly thick lines, whereas like the brush tip is more thinner lines and might be naturally more inconsistent. I will be discussing my discourse with the color selections here, especially with like the gold and silver supposedly, because that's more of like a unsettling brown and awkward gray. Also, the sim tap markers are obviously a lot more opaque than the acrylic set, so that's something else to note. Before doing an illustration with these, I kind of wanted to just break them in and try them out. Hence my little doodle of characters here. But starting out, I ended up coloring a little chibi version of Ramada from Hypnosis Mike. And for this first one, I only use the SimTap markers, but um, whenever they are dry, they are dry. And they are also very opaque, so there's not really much room for blending. I kind of take the approach of blocking in color or like cell shading, I guess. I feel like the traits of this marker make that the most like appealing approach or easy approach. I also noticed there was a lot of like nib fraying, like not a ton, but definitely noticeable fraying of the nib. And I'm not sure if it's because of like the paper I was using. I looked on the other side and there wasn't any like paper damage. So you just have to be a little bit careful of that and like try to keep it clean because it might get a little bit messy. But you can see how I used the white on top of like the pink and turquoise whenever I was doing the bubbles and that made them appear light. I was going for like a holographic look, but yeah, I think the white is really the only marker you can do this technique with though. All the other colors are quite opaque in the sense that they don't really like blend with each other so the white is gonna look naturally more transparent because it's the lightest color. Now as I used only sim top markers in the first drawing, I use only the 32 set of acrylic markers in the second drawing. 
So I'm painting one of my OCs and um, she has like this somewhat violet magenta type of hair. And I was trying so hard with the colors to make it work and get it to look how I wanted, but the colors just would not really blend together. There was no sense of like values or shading, they were kind of just like the same values of colors, just different colors. So it comes out looking kind of awkward and streaky and even though I try to fix it, it just kind of gets worse. It is still a form of paint, so the texture makes sense, but I was hoping it would be just a little bit more smooth looking. Also, looking at both of these, you can see that while both of them do have different forms of like opaqueness, not all of the colors have like that nice, smooth, flat, matte look, if that makes sense. So that's kind of what I'm looking for whenever I go to use acrylic markers, to be honest. It definitely kind of has like a form of streakiness, and that's with me layering up too, by the way. Like I at least layer it like two to three times, and usually by then I would have hoped it to look pretty solid, but it still seems like it has some ways to go, so that's just an observation. But coloring the last two doodles uh, for these, I end up using both the Semtap markers and the 32 set. The character that I'm coloring right now is Nico from Nambaka, and the character that I color to the right of him is Mint from Tokyo Mew Mew, like the original, not the new one. And I was trying to think of characters with ranging colors from each other on this entire like little test, but getting into the color range discourse, um, I just wish that there were some better options. And I am keeping in mind that I'm saying this as an artist who does predominantly draw characters and people, of course, and I also realize that these are smaller like starter sets, but I feel like some better choices could have been made even in these smaller sets, and especially on like the flesh tones, like for the skin. It's the fact that my options are between like a sickly vampire pale white or like an ashy kind of brown that I wouldn't feel comfortable using for darker characters. Like there's no in between on that SimTap set, that's it, that's all I get. But even in the 32 set, the pigment for like the tans and browns feel like a little bit of a stretch for a skin color. I don't know how much they take that into account when making these sets because I know they're probably prioritizing like other shades, but even then, I feel like we could have got better pigments even on non-skin tones. I mean, like where's my highlighter pink? It's the way that the choice of color, like the hue specifically, could have been better even with the limited colors that we had. Especially with the 32 set because like we have 32 colors. Why was there three or four occasions where it's like two colors look very similar in pigment? Like I don't really need that. If this 32 set of markers is made to be blendable, you would assume that it's okay for colors to look quite different from each other than similar because that's how blending works. You can blend colors that don't look alike as long as they're like remotely similar. So that's good reason for you to have a color set with colors that are genuinely different from each other but still have the compatibility to be blendable within each other, you know? Because I noticed that's another thing too. Some of the markers just simply don't blend together well. Which if this is acrylic paint makes it even more odd because paint really should be more blendable even than markers themselves. But I digress. Um, we're getting on to the illustration part and so I'm just picking out my colors. You can see I have a drawing here of Ari from League. Um, it's been so long since I've drawn her too, it feels kind of nostalgic. But I just place her on the back of one of my sketchbooks so that way I don't get my desk dirty. Since I'm keeping it simple with a solid background, I kind of just go ahead and fill that in. And again, as you can see, especially with these acrylic uh, 32 set of markers, they do not naturally um, go on pretty opaque. And in general, I know whenever I put a coating on, kind of similar to markers, I'll have to go in again with another layer. But again, if I have to go for more than three layers just to get it to look like super solid, I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> Now there's a lot of back and forth in this illustration, but honestly I did have a lot of fun putting this together. I feel like the main part of the back and forth came to the skin, and it's kind of funny because like you're gonna see me go back and forth with that all throughout this illustration. It's kind of funny because like you can see how stubborn I am in like real time. Like also it's kind of just like the whole learning curve with working with new materials because I have used acrylic paint and I've used um, paint markers before, but it's like putting it together in an illustration, obviously there's like a lot more that you're having to work around and troubleshoot and figure out, so it's kind of what you see me do. And you can already tell that I'm going for a more painterly style on this one instead of like just simple cell shading, and so that kind of requires me to blend the colors more and get like this nice soft look. And I was already antsy knowing that I'd have to use like the Sim Tap marker as the base for the skin color because there wasn't really any other color I could have used that would make sense. But I was also very anxious using this color because this shade of like a light beige is so pale that whenever I swatched it on the paper for the first time, I was like, Dog, I can hardly tell the difference between like this color and the actual sketchbook paper. Like how in the Genshin Impact am I supposed to use this? Don't get me wrong, I do know that Ari has like porcelain skin basically, but I do feel like 
even on lighter skin shades, there's always some kind of warmer influence going on and like pinks or oranges. So I just wanted to make sure that I was like adding that in there. The most enjoyable part of coloring skin to me is whenever you can sort of like bring forth the sense of life and dimensionalness, is that a word? <laughs> Where you like, you know, add in all these different shades and obviously that always depends on like the environment or the lighting or things like that. So for this one, I was just trying to like bring the colors together by blending the oranges and the peaches with the skin. But you'll see that every time I add in all the shading for the skin and all the different colors and then I try to like go back over it with like that light color from the SimTap set, it simply just covers everything, like it doesn't really blend. And that's because, like I said, the SimTap markers are a lot more opaque compared to the Acrylic 32 set, so they just kind of cover everything, but then also they dry a lot faster too, so even whenever I try to like layer it on top, the blending just works a little bit more chaotically in that sense. I tried to combat this by moving as quick as possible whenever I was using both like the skin tone and then it's complementing colors together. So I'd put down like a peach pink or like the orange color and then I'd quickly go back over it with the light beige again and so on and so on. And doing this back and forth of attempted blending is obviously going to cause this really light marker to get the colors of like the pink and orange on the marker itself. But I pretty much felt like that was the only way to get that blended look and there's no worries about it getting messed up from that because you can always like just activate the marker some more and let more of the original paint flow and then it's back to normal. That's also why you might see me whip out this scrap of paper, it's because I'm using it to wipe off any of the excess paint on the lighter marker. Also, I color this piece kind of awkwardly, so it's like there's some moments like right now where I just leave that ear completely left uncolored <laughs> for a while and I just start working on completely different sections and don't visit it until like 30 minutes later for some reason. Also, note how the main hair highlight was able to get that bright, vibrant blue because I left that area completely white instead of coloring at first. Because even though these markers can build up to be opaque, they're definitely not as solid and vibrant enough to paint on like darker surfaces and expect it to look highly visible. Because my initial thought was like, oh, they're acrylic markers, so obviously I can just like paint over whatever I paint. But whenever it comes to, say, doing highlights on hair, these markers are not opaque enough for you to like just keep layering on top of the highlights and then it'll just suddenly look like magically vibrant. Um, so yeah, just leave a white space if you want to like really stand out. Otherwise, um, it's gonna look a little bit more dull. And you can kind of see that in the other areas that I've colored on the blue. It's like, it is lighter, but it's not nearly as like vibrant as I was expecting it to be. Kind of like the spot where I left it white instead of coloring it first. Now I know it's showing me going over the skin again because I can't help myself, but I wanted to talk about the outfit part because getting to the red of her outfit, when I try to blend the red marker with like this deep maroon color, those colors are not buddies. Like they are not friends. They are not together. They're not even trying to be together. They did not want to blend at all. And I was like, okay, my bad. <laughs> but I was kind of bewildered because earlier I realized I had made the mistake of trying to blend colors that had the same value as each other, which if these are acrylic markers based off of acrylic paints, then I'm assuming that they would have the ability to blend to Despite being the same values because even markers can do that like right regular alcohol markers can blend together despite being the same value but even then I was like okay well let's just say that I messed up there let's try it with two different values so the red is obviously a lighter color than like this dark maroon red that I use but even then they just like do not blend together at all like they it's very forceful of a blending I would say like they just do not look happy being next to each other <laughs> so uh, yeah I noticed that that seems to be a reoccurring theme for some of the colors throughout the set they just for some reason they don't really work together as well and I feel like that kind of sucks because with acrylic paint again you can blend together pretty much anything and even with markers there's a good amount of colors you can blend together despite their differences but in this case it's very hit or miss and that's why I feel like this 32 set truly is like a mix between acrylic paint and markers they have to be layered up in order for you to see the vibrance or appear as like opaque but at the same time, that doesn't mean that you can just like shade by layering the same color like you can with alcohol markers. Because if you try to like layer them, it simply just solidifies the color more. It doesn't make it darker or anything like that. As I said earlier, I approach this art illustration with a more painterly style. But again, you can definitely use cell shading instead. And dare I say it might be easier that way too. I mean, it does take a bit to build up the opacity, especially if you're using markers like the 32 set. But if you're going for like painterly, I'd say just don't worry too much about it being clean. 
It's up to everyone's own style, of course, but I feel like the nature of acrylic paint is to be a bit more like textured and organic sometimes, if that makes sense. Since we're inching closer to the ending, let me go ahead and talk about my initial conclusions from working with these markers so far. Again, whenever it comes to color selections, I'm pretty disappointed because I felt like even with what small options we had, we could have had better options. <laughs> I feel like the light beige is a little bit too light. Even on terms of a light skin tone, I feel like it should have a little bit more saturation because I can always use the white marker to like lift up colors a little bit more like I did earlier. This light beige feels more appropriate to use as like a highlight part of someone's skin rather than coloring the entire base skin as that color, if that makes sense. And that's more or less my issue with the browns as well because it feels like, um, at least in the 32 set, that they work more as like a supportive color instead of like a base color for skin. Either way, just the lack of flesh tones in these sets, the fact that like the SimTap set only has like two skin tone related colors and that are very drastically different from each other of course, and then the 32 set, which has even more markers, has like no light skin option at all. I'm just like, what is going on? And I'm mainly taking points off for that extra because both of these sets include shades that I probably could have done without to be honest, like I don't need metallic shades. And for the 32 set, you could have just left the silver and gold out completely and made that into flesh tones or the like two blues or two greens or two oranges that look very similar to each other, you know? Like I didn't really need those. Now these markers can go over most dry media in your sketchbook, so like pen, pencil, and all of that, but that said, I feel like the opaqueness could be a little bit stronger. Especially on the 32 set, like I don't know if it's because they're using brush markers that you don't have to activate or anything, but I feel like the amount of like layering that I have to do just to get a somewhat solid appearance could be a little bit improved on. See, I want it opaque, but I also want it blendable, so if we could just work those two together, it would be on track. There is a little bit of like brush tip fraying or like deterioration on some of the nibs. I don't know if it's just because of the paper that I'm using, so I'll definitely look into that. I also want to try that thing where you like coat the paper first and like either gesso or white paint to help it. My last gripe is that I don't really like how it comes out on terms of like the glare that the paint causes for some reason. I'll show it at the end, but it's a little bit odd. It kind of has like this unsettling glossy finish, and I know not all acrylic markers do that because my Posca markers don't do that, so I'm just kind of wondering like what's going on there. And I hope none of this sounds like too harsh for criticism because all of that said, these are pretty fun to try out. Like I wouldn't say that these are for serious paintings, but if you ever want to experiment with illustrations and try like a different medium, or if you just want to add something new and exciting in your sketchbook pages, I think this is a good start. Like I said, they're opaque enough to go over most sketchbook media, and I like how it's very like grab and create for the most part. Considering that these are markers that you can paint on multiple surfaces with, it's very accessible and easy to add color to many things. And on top of that, they're not really messy and they're pretty good to take with you on the go. For the convenient brush tip, price, and amount of markers that you get, I feel like they rival Posca pretty well. I don't really know if I'm ready to commit to any larger sets just yet, but hopefully I can put these to use on a future sketch spread. So I hope you'll stay tuned for that and I hope you enjoyed my illustrations, but that is all for me today. Let me know if you have any questions or if you'd like me to use these again. I'd love to try an illustration with the cell shading approach, but thank you guys so much for watching this week's video. If you enjoyed your time here today, you can let me know by leaving a like. If you're interested to see more of my content, you can check my other videos and subscribe. For reference, if you're new, I am Rhea or Etheria. I like making art and art related content on my channel. I do try to post weekly videos, but if you would like more timely updates, you can always check out my other social media linked in the description or also at the end of the video. Till next time, once again, thank you guys so much for watching and I wish you a nice rest of your day and or week. Take care.